Welcome back everybody. In this video I'm going to tell you why you really only need two Fujifilm lenses for almost all use cases. Um, whether you want to shoot mid-range, uh, wide-angle, telephoto or macro, um, you can do this with these two lenses under certain limitations. Of course I'm talking about the 16 to 80 mm f4 constant aperture and the 70 to 300 mm f4 to f5.6 uh, variable aperture lens. With these two lenses alone you already cover a range of I think about 24 to 450 mm in full frame equivalent. That's an incredible range to have covered with only two lenses that are actually quite compact as well. Um, the quality of the lenses is actually very good especially if you consider the price of them. Um, obviously there are some limitations to this lens lineup as there is with any lens lineup. One limitation for example is that you will not really be able to shoot portraits in a standard folk length with an incredible bokeh. What you can obviously do is you can go the more telephoto route and just step back a bit. Um, that way you will get better bokeh. The problem with that is the faces will be more compressed and usually that's not seen as very aesthetic when you shoot in portraits. I mean, it isn't like the 16-80 to f4 lens uh, has bad bokeh per se. The problem is it's just not comparable to um, some of Fuji's prime lenses that have um, aperture of f1.4, f1.2. In addition to that, it won't be as easy to shoot super wide-angle shots as it would be if you had a dedicated wide-angle lens. But I find usually that the 60mm on the crop sensor is wide enough for me. Um, if you definitely need to go wider than that, you still have the possibility to shoot multiple pictures and just stitch them together. And um, I think I'll just uh, put a couple of links in the video description down below um, to guides that show how to do that. So I think these two points can either make it or break it for people that want to get into the Fujifilm systems and are looking for lenses to buy. But I think especially the first one, the portrait one, doesn't really apply to most people that want to get into the Fujifilm system because I feel like most people that are dedicated to shooting portraits um, will usually go the full frame route because it's easier to get a low f-stop. If these two points don't apply to you, you can get incredible value out of these two lenses. Let's talk about the 16 to 80 mm f4 lens first. Um, I got this in a package deal with the X-T4 and I would advise you if you haven't bought a Fujifilm um, system camera yet, uh, X system camera yet, uh, to get this lens with your camera together because I think in a package like the combo they're usually a bit cheaper. Anyway, um, it's a constant aperture f4 and that is quite convenient because when you zoom in you don't have a changing aperture which can be a bit annoying but you can still work around it. Um, I find that this lens is quite sharp um, especially from 16 to 60 millimeters. Um, I think after 60 millimeters from 60 to 80 there is a slight drop off you can tell um, it's not huge it's still pretty sharp but um, yeah you can you can basically just tell. With this lens, lowest aperture being f4, um, some people might think that it won't be low enough, but I find for most cases, as I said before, I usually shoot landscape and travel photography, and for both of these use cases, I don't need anything lower than f4, and I have to say, usually I stop up a bit to about f5.6, f8, something like that. Um, yeah, and if you're the same, this lens alone is already quite a bang for your buck. In addition to that, I also have my 70-300mm f4 to f5.6 variable aperture lens and I initially ordered it in January of this year, 2022, um, because I had planned to go to an F1 race and usually you're set a bit further away from the track and I wanted some more reach.
unfortunately because of various reasons like the chip shortage and so on it took the shop I ordered it from about seven months to deliver it um, still one month prior to the one race so I was able to take some really nice pictures I think um, but in this long seven month waiting period I was looking into what I could do with the lens more and more and it really only increased my desire for the lens so this lens not only has an incredible reach from 105 to 450 full frame equivalent um, no it also has an incredible close focusing distance minimum focusing distance of I think 83 centimeters so if you're at 300 millimeters 83 centimeters away from your subject that's quite close and it gives you I think a magnification ratio of one to three and that's already quite close to macro um, obviously isn't macro um, which would be a magnification ratio of one to one but it gives you the option to double in this kind of photography and it can be really fun so i actually went out last weekend to shoot the pictures i scouted for in the previous video but this time in foggy conditions and i obviously took both of those lenses and i'm just gonna leave you with these clips real quick hey guys um as I said in my last video when I was scouting for pictures that I could shoot in the fog, I would come back to this place here um, when it's foggy outside and the conditions, uh, the forecast yesterday said the conditions would be foggy and so I got up early in the morning uh, to drive here. Unfortunately there is some fog, I don't know if you can see in the background, there is some fog but it's not as thick as I would like it to be, um, not at all actually. Um, like. You look around here you can barely see it um, but anyway I came back to the same location again but I was disappointed because I found um, another composition I'll show you um, it's these I don't know if you can see uh, it's these mushrooms in that uh, tree um, I put on my telephoto lens and uh, zoomed in and um, I think you get a really nice picture So as I can't shoot uh, trees wrapped in fog, I have to resort to other things, um, but I think I found a nice composition. I'm stood next to this little stream and I am focusing on a specific rock right now and it makes for quite a nice composition, um, how the water is flowing over it and there are also the, uh, yellow and red leaves in the water and I put my polarizing filter on so I could get rid of the glare on the water. I think it makes for quite a nice composition. And lastly I shot a picture that I didn't comment on video though. Um, it was a picture of a leaf that was laying on the ground and was frozen. I zoomed in to about 260 millimeters and went for the minimum focusing distance. And I like this picture quite a lot because on the leaf you can see so much detail, the little icicles on the leaf. Um, yeah, just gonna show you. So, all in all, I'm very happy with this lens lineup I have. I can recommend it to anyone who's looking into buying um, lenses for the Fujifilm X system, especially if you're into woodland, landscape and travel photography. Um, not to forget, both of these lenses are actually weather sealed and that means basically means that you can go out in any condition imaginable. All of this obviously doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy any other lenses, just that this two lens lineup can already be enough for a lot of people that are into set types of photography. Um, personally I also own two more lenses, first of all the 12mm Samyang for the Fujifilm X system. It's um, f2 lens, but you should really only use it from f5.6 to about f11. Um, and also is a manual focus lens, but that doesn't really bother me. So in about one year of ownership, I think I've actually used this lens 
about three times and I think on most of these uh, occasions I could have just used the 16 to 18 millimeter um, on 16 millimeters of course and could have just stepped back a little or what I could have done is of course just shot multiple images and stitched them together. In addition to that, I also have the Fujifilm 23mm f2 prime lens, which is a neat little lens. Um, I usually only use it on days where photography isn't my main focus though, uh, because I can just, like it's nice and compact on the camera, I can just take the camera and just snap away, which is quite convenient, but I, it's not really necessary for me to own this lens. To um, sum up all of this information together, if your main focus doesn't lie in portrait photography where you need a shallow depth of field, neither does it lie in super wide angle photography where you 100% need a dedicated wide angle lens, I think this lens lineup is the perfect lens lineup. Um, in terms of versatility, you have a reach from 16 to 300 millimeters. Um, and also you have the option to double in macro photography but also from the point of price to performance or price to quality ratio however you want to say it um, it's incredible anyway this is it from me for today. Um, maybe you own one or even both of these lenses, or maybe you own neither. Uh, anyway, I'd really appreciate it if you tell me in the comments down below whether you agree or disagree with me, and also tell me what your favorite lens lineup might be. If you want to support the channel, um, it really helps if you would give me a thumbs up, and if you want to see more of these videos, you can obviously subscribe to the channel. Anyway, have a good day. Bye.